Okay, so we are officially live here on social media, and this is Reflection Artist Live, episode number 69. And today is Wednesday, June 15th, and we have with us special guest Jason Miller, who is the National Sales Director for Kosh Chemi Chemicals. So if you're not familiar with them, you're going to get to know him today with Jason. Also get to know a bit more about his background. I mean, this guy's been detailing off and on for 25 years. And of course, just in the past 10 years, really took it on full tilt with getting involved in the industry. And of course, the different positions he's played in the industry with leading up to where he is now with Kosh Chemi and, and driving that as well for the sale. So we want to get into his background and thank you, Jason, for joining us today. I know it's midday and you know, yeah, taking the time out of your day, we much appreciate that. So tell us, uh, you know, how it all got started and how you got started in the wonderful world of detailing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, of course, uh, it's been a long road uh, from, you know, geez, I, I think I was 14 or 15 years old and my dad uh, didn't want me out in the streets <laughs> too long late at night and, you know, basically had a friend to he was in the automotive industry for a long time as well, uh, mechanic, and then turned a dent man. And in the 90s, you know, this was a big thing, the new paintless dent repair stuff. So uh, he was very involved in that and had a uh, couple shops that he did work in locally. So he just got me into a detail business and I was just doing interior stuff for the guy. And, um, and that's where I learned kind of the craft of, of really just you know, getting a, a turning a car from you know whether it be dealer work or interior work or um, you know uh, a customer car. I had no idea. I'd come in after school, work for a few hours, get paid cash, <laughs> and then come home and want to go back out and ride my bike and stay out with my friends till dark anyway. So, but it kept me you know kept me busy, and uh, my dad you know really instilled that in me to a lot of work ethic. He was always that way. Uh, a lot of people in my family uh, were businessmen and, and, and still are. So I think that was important to him to get me at a young age to do that kind of stuff. Of course, I still have a taste of that in your mid teenage years. That's exactly what you need, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, like I was about to say, I, I still got my taste of fun too, but, uh, and, I, and I had a lot yeah. of that in my twenties, but yes. Uh, but you had some money in your age. pocket to at least have fun with. Yeah. Yeah, young, young it wasn't age. allowance money. It was hard working money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And come to find out, what's so funny? The the twist is uh, later on in life. I'm telling this story one time, and my father calls me and he says, "You know, I probably should tell you the truth. I paid for you to work at Richie's shop for those years. Oh. <laughs> he didn't. I'd go in on Friday and give him an envelope of cash. I asked him how many hours you work, and I'd just pay him <laughs> just to keep you from." getting in trouble so i thought that was actually pretty that is pretty cool right your dad's awesome yeah that's a cool move right there that's I'm something sure that yeah you don't you wouldn't hear that from most children with their fathers in that scenario that's just really cool that says a lot for him yeah so yeah that was my teenage years uh, obviously you know we were talking before this uh and at the detailers conference and stuff i mean we you know, i i got into other things in, in high school i worked you know at a at a car wash. Um, I always found myself hanging out at the detail shop though. It's where I wanted to be. It's what I knew, you know, it's where um, the magic happens. <laughs> yeah. But you know, when you're a younger kid, it's, you know, they don't want to teach you. It's, it's not like it is today. You know, Yeah. this is in 19, 1998, uh, 99, probably I graduated in 2000. So, um, you know, it, it, it the, the formal training, the, you know, watching stuff on YouTube that wasn't around yet. So no, that wasn't a thing. <laughs> it was just, yeah, that's Bob's son. You know, I, I let him dry cars off. He, he's not a detailer yet. You know, <laughs> meanwhile, I've already been doing it for a few years for a very, uh, you know, very well known local dealer detailer guy. So anyway, um, yeah, that's uh, that, that's the story from teenage to some high school jobs. You know, I worked, did some Hollister and Abercrombie stuff too, you know, just to, just to have, have you in the in the tight shirts and showing oh, yeah. off the abs, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. I they put you on a pedestal way. to make sure you fit the profile. For... Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, and if I, you know, I was in Hollister and in Abercrombie, and and uh, I went into the stock room and tried to become a manager and floor manager. I, I always had that. In me. I just, how do I move up? What do I need to do to show you I can do this? I can do that. You know. I, uh, I want to be more money. I want to be successful. I want more yeah. money. I want to be successful. It's just the, the work ethic I've always had. So 
Um, but uh, anyway, so the car wash job in my, my early 20s turned to, I worked, I did get into the detail shop. I became the detail manager, uh, kind of worked my way up through that chain. That chain was um, bought eventually by a New York businessman. And uh, he already had owned car washes and car dealerships on the East Coast. So his plan was to grow it, um, which it's still growing today. Uh, and I moved up through the company just from detail shop nice. manager to general manager of one of the car wash location to eventually operations director of, uh, of a lot of the car washes here in Pittsburgh and assisted some operational stuff in other dealerships he had as well. But the core of my uh, director job was, was overseeing the car wash and detail chain. So uh, I did that for 10 years and uh, decided in my early 30s to focus a little more on my future. You know, if, if, if one location would sell or he sells the entire thing, where does that put me, right, for the rest of my life? Yeah. And, and that's what I decided to, uh, to open up my own detail business. And uh, now, I did in that, little, in that 10 year time frame, right. That growth that, you know, one, one, uh, you know, that chain as you've gone up in it, did that teach you a lot as far as, you know, your younger years and the development mentality wise for yourself, did that teach you how to be a better leader just from working in the field and doing those things and understanding how to, deal with employees and customers and all those things combined? Oh my goodness. Yes. I mean, without that, um, I wouldn't have had the, the scalable success I had at my detail business that I built in Pittsburgh because, you know, at that point in my life, uh, I've already reconciled payroll. I've reported taxes. I've gone to court for, you know, an accident in the car wash tunnel. I've, hired and fired. I had a hundred employees. I, you know, I, everything that you could need, uh, you can't, I mean, you learn a lot in college, you learn a lot in, in technical school, whatever, but that hands-on that. experience for the better, better part of a decade was what made me, you know, grow very quick. Um, yeah, I, I, I incorporated a business in 2013 and, uh, that was, uh, what I was starting to do was, was a holdings business to kind of I thought, well, I can't, I don't have the capital to build a car wash, but I will uh, be able to start a pretty successful detail shop. I would think relatively quick. I have all the experience. Um, and that was it. I started mobile. And within a few years, I had a, my first one bay shop where I would start doing some work uh, in there uh, with a, one employee. And then I still had the mobile uh, truck go out. And eventually we just, by then we were full brick and mortar by 2015 um in a, in a over three thousand square foot shop uh and that shop's still there today uh that's it's called it's two year time there. frame 2013 to 2015 and that's that trend where corrections and ceramic coating started becoming more of the, the common uh applications more of what yeah. people are looking for even not just with the detail industry but that's when i think that that train really started rolling to take off right in that time yeah. frame did that help you and contribute to a lot of the growth of your shop as well? It did. Um, in my hometown, not that there's not, you know, nice houses, nice cars, but an actual ceramic coating shop, uh, there wasn't anything really around. You know, there's a few guys doing it. A um, few guys started in, in, in 2011 and a little before that. Um, and and it really, other than that, there, there, wasn't, there wasn't too many people at the time focusing on that. Now, in truth, I did start from my roots, right, of, of high volume detailing. That's just what I came from with a car wash background. Um, and also that was the, the business model that you were used to. And it's, why not? Right. Yeah. And, and, and my connections were always very deeply rooted in that, you know, with my father being in, a, in dent um, in, in a dent business and, and, and me being really known in car wash and, and in the dealership world. It was very easy for me to bounce around from dealer to dealer and say, hey, I'm opening up my own shop. You know, if you want to, I got my transporter plates, I got everything I need, I got my insurance, I have, you know, this and that, uh, I could pick up cars tomorrow. I mean, that was boom, 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 I was picking up, you know, cars and accounts very, very quickly to where, um, you know, I hired drivers at one time. <laughs> and my, my dad, I had uh, another buddy, a buddy of mine, uh, his father, who was retired, uh, I paid a couple drivers, uh, you know, nine, 10, 12 bucks an hour just to pick up cars for me at that point, the load got so big. Um, I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't just go pick up a car by myself anymore. I had four to return. There's only so much time in a day. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, at one point I had night turn guys. I mean, we worked seven days a week. Cars were getting done in the daytime. Retail guys would come in. One shift would leave. Another shift would start at four or five. They'd work, you know, till 10 at night. Come in in the morning. I'd have 10 or 11 cars to look over. I'd start driving cars back. And uh, it got it got to be pretty big pretty quick. Um, and then I still started, uh, you know, th that was fun. I'd always, I had that goal of, well, I did 60 last week. I want to see if I could do 70 details. You know, I want to see if I can do 80, you know, how does the quality still look good at 80 cars? You know, I used to do uh, over a hundred at a big facility that I did for my old, you know, in the car wash job. Uh, that guy owned three big car dealerships in Pittsburgh and we had a big recon center that did all of the cars. So wow. with lower cars through the service drive and 10, 15 details a day, I, I was processing over a hundred 120 some cars a week so i was used to that volume but i you know to do it for your own business and your own labor your own you know workman's comp your own insurance it starts to like okay so you know do i just keep blowing walls down do i keep getting you know do, am i 10,000 square feet at what point do i say hey i want to be like that shop where i have a real beautiful well-lit bay and get into just full-time ceramic you know or ppf or tint so uh 2017 ish i think i really started tilting the ice towards a lot more of the um the stuff you'll see in pro car care today you know where it's a lot more ppf ceramic coating um window tinning and that kind of stuff that that was where i really started to to draw back and, and a lot of that was also the manager that i put in place uh, i brought on a general manager for my shop who ended up being the new owner he bought it off of me uh, to do this uh, opportunity in which we'll get to next. But uh, so with that being said, he was like, you know, I, I really want, I think that the brand's there. I really want to focus on getting these high ticket jobs. I really want to focus on that for my own personal, you know, goal too, is I want to be the best ceramic coding guy. I want to be the best guy in Pittsburgh for this. Uh, did, it, did it, was it, I don't know how I should ask this, but giving that up a little bit and giving, you know, handing those tasks over and those daily tasks over to somebody else, like a general manager, does that hard letting go a little bit because that was your baby and you've, you've grown this to such an animal that now you're kind of letting some of those responsibilities go. Um, it was definitely a, a pivot, you know, moment in my, uh, in my, you know, in my business, but personally, uh, I, I hate to sound like such a businessman, but I, I, I grew that business to, to basically to walk away and do something in addition to that. That makes sense. You know, so from day one, was I the face? Yes, I was, but it was very publicly known that Zach was the manager the minute that I brought him in, you know, um, there was actually a few lead employees there that were there for a little while who uh, were kind of taken back by it. Like, geez, he, he brings in this manager. I've been here for a couple of years now, you know, but I knew what he brought to the table. And I also knew uh, where I wanted to go in my career. And really it was starting to, uh, you know, kind of draw the line in the sand, if you will, and start going that, well, that way pretty, pretty, uh, pretty quickly, but um, eh, not quickly. It's not the right term. Probably, you know, once I drew the line in the sand and said, okay, Zach's going to be the manager, you know, these are the duties I need you to relieve me of so that I can continue on growing the business and not being involved in the daily operation of the business. We really started to take off. And that's how really, honestly, the ceramic coating and stuff uh, started to started to grow a lot faster. Was he your first attempt with the GM or did you have other attempts or did you just hit a home run out the gate with him? So he was one of my large accounts was a big dealership group in Pittsburgh that um, that was giving us overflow work from the shop he ran. So he was, oh, okay. he was running a high volume detail operation, similar to my recon uh, operation I had in Pittsburgh for that dealer group owner I was telling you about. So I could see that he can handle seven, eight, nine detailers. I can see that the cars are coming out great. Every time I'd go drop a car off to him, he'd come out and inspect the vehicle, walk around it with me. You know, what about this? What about that? Oh, okay, great. You couldn't fix that. Great. It looks good. And I'm seeing 15 other cars he just did today done perfect and i'm thinking well if i'm ever going to walk away from the daily operation of my shop that's the guy i want you know so i just started uh you know basically just turning a little ear to, to that account a little more and trying to 
get involved with him a little bit more as much as I could um, to where I started talking up about what I'm doing. You know, I'm, I'm redoing uh, the shop. I'm remodeling it. We're going to put a bay in for ceramic coating. Um, you know, everything you see uh, now at this point, you know, is uh, on, on, on Instagram and social media and everything you're seeing, that's what this shop will be. Even the first time he walked down to the shop to visit it for like one of his first interviews, he walks in and uh, I had a little storefront set up, you know, and a big glass window behind me. And I'm standing there when you walk in, you could see the shop behind me and all the cars being worked on. He was like, wow, I didn't even know that this was like this in here. I thought it was just a big <laughs> garage, you know, so I, so I think he started feeling like, OK, well, you know, yeah, do I have a desk? Yeah, am I in charge of all these detailers? I am. But this is an image that I really haven't been offered yet, you know, and that's what I wanted for him. And also for me, I wanted to be, um, you know, uh, successful in this industry, obviously. So, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the story there. It's still there today. Um, like I said, the dealer work still comes in, but, uh, he, he, he has it, uh, tilted really towards the, the retail end and, 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 uh, the dealer work that we do do is um, was tailored to basically our role model now, which is a lot more of the correction. And we call it paint enhancement for the dealership because it's not a full, Correct. You know, dialing yeah. it in 90%, 90%. No, perfect nothing. title for that, especially yeah. for that mind, that dealership mindset, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can go into that if you like. But yeah, I, 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 we had a really great dealer menu, which was part of our success there. And that was just from all the years of me knowing exactly what the dealership wanted. So now um, with, with that, it was the business that was sold. Did you have, uh, with the building, the property or anything like that? Or was that on a lease kind of thing that just trans yeah, turned no, over to him? Yeah, no, good question. I leased it. Um, the building was, a uh, was a business, uh, like a commercial lease. Uh, I think I started at three years and then, um, and then I think it, I, I think now it's only two years, uh, every two years, I think, but mine was three at a time. But what I did was I just let the, I, again, I was very involved with them for many years and the, the business, uh, the owner knew me very, very well uh, and knew Zach at that point, at that time, the new owner very well. So well, I basically just, we just had to sit down. I said, look, here's where I'm looking to go in my career. I've had a, a great opportunity in front of me. Um, and Zach has a great opportunity in front of him to, to, to take over the reins fully and continue to build what I started since we've been leasing from you, um, can we finish my lease off at the end of this year and start his beginning of next? And yeah, you know, let's just reconstruct the lease and, and here we go. And, you know, being that I knew that at some point in my life, I would uh, get back into the car wash industry or get back into the industry from this side. Um, I was already all set up for it as well. So he created an LLC my, my holdings company sold him the, the title of the business, the website, all whatever was in there, <laughs> you know, nice. inventory wise. And that was a hard day walking away, looking back and seeing like all my equipment in there and stuff. It's like, man, yeah. I, when I bought that polisher and when I yeah. bought that extractor, yeah, personal feelings with this machine, <laughs> yeah. yeah, clearing my office out too was even like, geez, you know, I was so proud when I laid that floor in there, you know, it just, that, that was the part of it, of course, anybody can, can appreciate that part, but uh, yeah, just, it was all part of the, the, the bigger plan, um, you know, to, to, to be something in this career. I actually had car wash people um, at the last car wash show. I, you know, I touched base with some old, old connections and they were like, I knew you'd come back around again, <laughs> you know, cause it was something that I held uh, kind of held near and dear to my heart that, that part of the industry um and and now having both sides of it being in my professional uh kind of background i think yeah answering your question before again just led me to this opportunity with coach kemi see and i like the fact that that was a great testimony to the value of keeping relationships never burning a bridge right and then communication you know those two yeah. things right there to make you know to, to move mountains you know, having deep relationships or just positive relationships it doesn't have to be where you see somebody every day, but just staying in communication and staying on the same page. And when that happens, that, that could definitely make some huge moves. And then the fact that you were able to take to where I always tell people business has no emotion. So that's like what you did. You, you I mean, there's still some there, but you scaled it because you had a plan. You had a game plan, a business plan in regards to the end game of where you want to be or where you want to transition 
and you executed that step by step by taking little pieces of the pie out to where when it was all said and done, you got to the end goal of where you want to be. And I think that's awesome because a lot of people think that you could just jump in and then boom, it happens. And it's like, they don't realize that there's that three, five plus year time frame that work and building, building blocks have to be put into place. And if you skip those building blocks, your end goal is going to change. Yep. Yeah. Patience, you know, and, um, and honestly just taking everything in, you know, yes. I, now I'm teaching, uh, you know, certain trainings or, or talking at a conference or what have you, you know, and um, a lot of times it's the simple question of, uh, you know, is there anything you don't know about this stuff? I'm like, honestly, I learned stuff. Every, I mean, traveling the country now and seeing different shops and, you know, oh man, that's a good idea. Or oh, I would have done that. Or, hey, yeah. I did this. And, you know, owners are like, man, thank you. That's a great idea. That all, you, know, you learn something new every day. Uh, I still that, that is always a great feeling, right? Just to yep. being able to go and you pick up things and then also things they pick up from you. But the balance of that, it complementing, you know, being able to take those travels, that's something that I feel like if you're not in that position, you don't, you wouldn't understand until you're able to hit those different shops and those different areas in all the corners of the U.S. to understand that because there's a huge learning curve, even though we're all doing it the same way there's still the little differences that make us unique doing it. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's what, what I love most about this industry is, you know, there, there's so much that you can look back on that people still listen and learn from. And, and then yet every few months or so, at least in our case, we have new stuff coming for probably the next couple of years, but uh, <laughs> you know, just um, yeah, you, you just, you're always, you're always going to have, you know, new stuff to come around and, 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 and learn or relearn or whatever. So yeah, it's, it's something that's, I'm, I'm glad that now I have an opportunity to, to, uh, you know, spread some of the knowledge I've learned all these years. And, and at the same time, just really, um, get to, get to enjoy the industry from, a, from a new side, you know? So how did this present itself as being an opportunity for you to go into being in this position with Tosh Kimmy? Um, so I was an accredited installer for G Technic. So I knew Andy, uh, you know, well, um, I, I, I had known Andrew, um, obviously he was the nice CEO to be there. Cool. <laughs> to be cool. Yep. And, uh, <clears throat> so I knew, I knew Andrew, uh, um, really honestly, what inspired me about Andrew was, um, you know, uh, and I think you touched on this during his interview was, uh, his, his success, um, pretty much right out of school, right out of the gate, you know, and, uh, you know, his uh, working uh, for, you know, for his family business, doing uh, some things on his own and really transitioning to that CEO role. Um, and hopefully he, he doesn't mind me sharing this, but I think people will like this. I, I honestly reached out to him just as a, um, just like as a, on a friend side and just was like, man, I am, I'm, you know, I want to know, I think I'm ready in my career that when I sell my detailing company, that I'm ready to get into the industry um, as a CEO or as a manager uh, of sales or, you know, technical sales or, or whatever. Um, you know, I'm just, what's your story? Like, I'm inspired by, uh, you know, knowing you through G-Technic, of course, and, and knowing you not really on a personal level, but um, you just seem like a guy that, that, that knows those answers or can at least point me down that road so that I can kind of mentor by you and move down that path. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm certainly ready for it. I have a young family. I have the drive. I, I've, I've built companies. I've scaled them. I've sold them now. Uh, I, I think I'm ready for that next step in my career. Um, and I'm not sure how I, I kind of get there. My resume doesn't you know, I wasn't VP of sales or I wasn't a CEO somewhere else. So I'm not going to get headhunted for this. You yeah. know, I've worked at two or three places my entire life and I'm 38 years old. So how do I, how do I do it? You know? And he was like, you know, nobody's ever really asked me that before. <laughs> That's pretty cool. You know? And that was just like a Facebook message. So, um, so he's like, you know, we're not hiring at, at G Technic at the moment, but, um, you know, I know who you are from your shop and stuff. Just uh, send me your resume and um, 
I'll, I'll keep me in the loop. If there's anything I could do, just, just even as a friend, I'd, I'd certainly uh, give you some advice. And, you know, hopefully that kind of seeded with him a little bit. I think he, you know, he liked that or was touched by that. Um, and, uh, you know, really it just kind of was, was dry for a little while there. I didn't really hear anything back. And then uh, I just followed up. Um, hey, you know, anything new going on at G-Technic? And, you know, uh, no, not at the moment, but <clears throat> I might have something that you might be interested in. Oh, wow, really? Okay, you know, you know so, and, uh, and really just without going into too, too much more detail there, uh, obviously it led to, you know, what do you think about this? You know, are you interested in, um, in this opportunity? And uh, it's been kind of been talked about for a little while. Uh, I had already known, like, just through kind of being involved in the in the G-Tech side for a while, um, that, uh, you know, Andrew was trying to get something like that uh, started with them years back, and they weren't ready to really come to the U.S. So just through the grapevine and through talking uh, with a lot of other installers, uh, I had already tried. At the time, it was the H8 uh, came coming out of the U.K., uh, and I thought it was just just unreal like it was man it cuts so good it's fast it's it's glossy what else do these guys have you know yeah. so yeah. i had tried some stuff you could find it on like ebay or you know you could find it on um i think slim's detailing had it on there for a long time and that that was easy to to buy other than dealing with dhl <laughs> but yeah. i was used to that because in the beginning years of g technic everything was dhl everything took time to come in you know so um, when you're after something great or a good product, you know, you're, you're willing to, you know, you don't, you know, you don't, you don't want to just go find it anywhere, you know? So, um, so I was interested in the product already. I just haven't used everything. And really that's, that's kind of, you know, how it all started, um, through the pandemic, it was certainly, I think something nobody anticipated to, to start when it did, but it also gave us uh, a lot of time to really work things out and, and, you know, receive the first few containers and get a lot of our inventory started before the actual launch event, which, which happened in November of 2020. Yeah. And so, that was at, that was in Georgia, right? Yes. At, yes. At the winery. Yep. 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 That was at the winery. And then um, over at the, I wasn't actually there. I didn't start officially until December of 2020. Uh, I was, con I, I was doing a little bit of work. I just sold my business in July of 2020, the closing was, I had just sold my house <laughs> in September of 2020 and bought a new house. So I kind of took some time off in the fall uh, of 2020 and also was, again, unsure of this, when this start date was gonna happen. So I uh, was doing some consulting work uh, there, which I kind of agreed to something that ended in 2020. So basically, uh, December 2020 was my kind of official start date. So I wasn't able to go to the launch event, but I started officially, you know, that Monday, January 4th, I had, I had already been trained by the Germans. I had already worked with Andrew. I've been to Atlanta once. I hit the ground running in January, uh, uh, you know, that, that new year. So nice. Well, yeah. you know, now for nothing on the personal side, it's a good thing you did the, the, the house sale and picking up a new house before the whole, you know, market went crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was that was uh perfect timing you know yeah so, yeah you yeah. know you don't need to add any more to you know the transitioning aspect during those months right 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 yeah and now you know had i known you know you see even see still today you can look it up on like zillow or you know google the address or whatever um seeing my first house and seeing what it's worth i'm like really yeah. <laughs> that's crazy you know but i guess that's that's where it is so hopefully it all as it transitions back, it's not a, you know, a declining kind of drop off like it happened uh, years ago, you know, uh, what was that, 2009 or 10 or something, Yeah, um, you know, yeah. the real estate crash. But uh, hopefully this time around, it's not as severe, but uh, at some point, you know, hopefully it, um, it doesn't hurt anybody. But yeah, it worked out really well for me, unfortunately, you know, fortunately, it just worked out perfect that the business was done, the house sold, got the new house and uh waited for my my uh you know my new job to start so now with all these or i should say all these but all the different transitions you've had in business and everything you've done with the with your career now have you always been able to stay home base in pittsburgh there without having to make any major moves i mean i'm sure that the move you made was probably just a natural personal thing but 
did you have to do it based on the career or the business you were working for at all? Um, you, no, I mean, I, I did, well, I was on a personal level, but uh, knowing kind of where I was going and even some of the consulting stuff I was kind of looking at before I ended up signing the coach deal um, was involving me to travel. So I just lived pretty far east of Pittsburgh uh, in the first house. Uh, I grew up east of Pittsburgh, but, but only by like 20, 30 minutes. But I, I lived about an hour outside. So now I'm a little closer to the airport. So um, that makes sense. Yeah, so it just, it just was a move for me before kids got involved in school and all that stuff. Uh, and we're closer to my wife's parents. So they, they do help us out a lot with the kids. And, and uh, you know, so that was just a good move for us to kind of get closer to the city and not live so far outside. So I run to an airport, uh, run to the Pittsburgh airport now. It's about 30 minutes away. So nice. it's a, lot, a lot quicker for me to jump on a plane and go wherever I need to go. No, that's so, I'm the yeah. same way with having Orlando 30, 40 minutes from me, depending upon traffic. It yeah. makes life a lot easier, especially that airport that goes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike some of these smaller ones, not so much, right? Yeah. <laughs> Pittsburgh is relatively small, but it's, it, you know, it's okay. They're, they're, there's not as many direct flights as I would, would wish, but they are adding a new, uh, another gate. So there'll be another leg to that entire airport. You were just nice. here recently, weren't you? I don't know if you noticed yeah. a lot of construction. So they are revamping it a little bit, making it a little bigger. So hopefully that'll bring in uh, maybe some more planes and more flight opportunities. But uh, it's it's a good airport. I love it because I can get anywhere I need to go. It's my hometown airport, but you can zip through there in minutes. You know, it's not it's not never that busy. So it's it's pretty 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 good airport. Uh, no, um, I like I the like experience it. there. Yeah, yeah. Now with going into you know signing and that first January of 2021 now, now, now you're all in with them. And is that the sales director position? Did you start with that or did you build into that? Or how did that work with that, that, uh, that first yep. you know, takeoff with them? Yep. So I was hired in as a Northeast regional manager. So that's uh, basically a sales management position uh, under Andrew and, and, you know, we, we started kind of growing on the East coast first. Um, we, we had a region split up, uh, Northeast, South, you know, central West, you know, whatever. Um, so I started Northeast. So my, my region was from Virginia up to Maine. So the States that kind of, you know, went upward to the right, the whole Northeast there, that was my sales territory. Um, so I put a lot of time and energy into growing the key accounts up there. Um, Eventually, as we started this new, you can see my background with the, our, our own vans and our own salesmen uh, cool. in certain cities in certain areas. Um, that was kind of uh, the responsibility of a regional manager. So you would, you know, insert a guy in a certain city, uh, oversee the distributional partnerships and oversee sales as a whole. So any inquiries coming in, um, you know, if it was in New York, then, you know, it came into our Atlanta headquarters, then, you know, Andrew would call me and I would either handle that inquiry myself or, uh, or, or refer it to a distributional partner, uh, or one of our own sales guys. So that, that was the regional position. Um, and I, uh, turned and burned. <laughs> so as soon as January started, I, I was just, I already had some relationships uh, in the in the works because of my previous you know life and uh, and really just wholeheartedly knew that this was the opportunity to to really sh to shine you know show the German team over there and Andrew what what I can do and uh, I really didn't you know look back I mean, of course I listened to them and did whatever they they needed but I just busted butt man there's no other way to really put it um, just to try to fly anywhere I could drive anywhere I could stay respective to, you know, expenses. But, you know, I was cold calling people. Have you heard of us? Oh, you have great. When can I come and do a demo? Um, you know, and just talking about the, the products and from inside and out and, and really just grew that territory um, as hard as I could and as fast as I could. And uh, within reason, you know, we, we were, I was spacing out distributors and, and balancing all of that, but it went really well. And it led me to 
um, our growth vertically up and down on the, on the East coast. And we started moving westward. And, uh, that was when, and, you know, Andrew and, and the, the German team offered me this position, uh, which is our national sales director. So now I'll oversee all of the regional managers, um, in the U S uh, and, and I'm taking a lot of the, some of the key accounts and a lot of the stuff that we do on more of a national level, uh, that Andrew was doing amongst everything else that he has to do. Uh, and just to try to help him out with, with, um, you know, everything as a whole. So, uh, I'm grateful and, um, you know, the opportunity is still very much in, in growth right now. We're, we're, we're still growing westward. We still have a lot to accomplish. Um, but you know, we're, 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 we're doing it and we're trying to do it sustainably and, and do it smart, but it's everything that I'm, I'm, I'm built for, you know, and used to doing so. Nice. Uh, I, you know, I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, distribution wise, you're looking at both online distributors and storefront distributors is where you get a lot of these products in front of them for that, that side of it, or the end user, the detailer, or a combination of both. How does that work? Yeah. So, um, it's a little bit of a combination. We have, um, obviously in the very beginning, we did a lot of online sale because that was basically Andrew and a lot, you know, it was just myself, very small team, you know, shipping out of Atlanta to those resellers. And then as we were great grabbing new, um, new customers, you know, we were shipping those customers as well, our product. Uh, so that's where it started. And then as we started kind of bringing more people in and growing those, uh, those territories out, um, you know, some end user stuff started, of course, just because some, some areas there was no local distributor or, yeah. you know, I don't want to buy it online. You know, a lot of guys um, a little older than us, let's say, <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't shop online, you know, no, you they don't money, do that. They think that online is going to steal everything including yeah. their soul. <laughs> yeah. You go to a body shop, you know, or something, uh, you know, a car dealership. Um, some of those kinds of guys, they, they like the truck pulling up and selling them stuff. So, yeah. Um, you know, we cater to cater that. And, and, and also I want to add in, we're, we're following the Germany model. I mean, in Germany, there's uh, 80 some, you know, respective uh, like guys on trucks like this. So, um, you know, if you could, envision Germany being the size of, you know, what Texas, that's a lot of reps, you know, it's a lot of, uh, some of them are franchisees, yeah. some of them are direct employees. Um, it's, it's very, everywhere you look, it seems like there's, there'd be somebody in a, in a territory, you know, they've 50 got a lot of, of market share and they're dominant in the market there, that brand in Germany, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And believe it or not over there, there's, we're, we're about 40% car wash sales. Uh, and 50, 60 percent the other way um, is industrial chemical and then detail. So car wash sales is a big part of, of, of that over there. So those guys over there would not only go into a detail shop like you're seeing us do here and sell a guy, you know, some magic wool cleaner or sell a guy some green star um, and, and maybe, you know, show him a new tool or selling or something. But over there, the guy would go into a pump room at a car wash and help a guy fix a flow jet or titrate, you know, the drum that they just added online and, and make sure everything's dialed in in the tunnel correctly. So um, it's, it's not just a sales position. It's, yeah. it's also a little bit of service, you know, too. So um, we, once we do move some car wash product over here, that is something that uh, again, furthermore, you know, really gives the reasoning for us having these vans. Um you know, whether we work with a local distributor to help assist their tunnel customers or self-service wash customers from the service side and they sell the product or, you know, there just simply isn't one, then we would, we would have somebody be able to cover that area. So nice. Now, as far as, um, you know, you guys are going to shows, you know, you guys are at the majority of shows that are, that are out right now, you know, um, SEMA. I don't know because I know we've had this pandemic situation with you guys hitting the U.S. during this pandemic for the most part. Are you guys looking at SEMA for this 22 SEMA? Yes, we are. And we were there in 21 also. I, so. I yeah, I know. I, I didn't get, I didn't personally go, so I, I never yeah. speak on who or wasn't. And I also know it's kind of scarce because there's so many people, so many companies that pulled out. So I didn't know what that looked like if you guys had showed up. 
Yeah. Well, for us, it was, you know, certainly from an expense structure, you know, we had to figure out, did it make sense or not? But we also were kind of wearing that first full year hat, you know, at that point in 21. So we thought it was important to, um, to, to show up and, and take advantage of our new coding we were talking about at that time and uh, bringing that over eventually. We've remastered some of our, 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 our uh, compounds and we use that stage to basically put that on, put on a show for it, you know? Yeah. Andy was polishing in real time all the, whole, the entire time. People kept walking up and uh, we built a really nice booth uh, in 21. This year, our, our, it'll be a little bigger. We did a 20 by 20 last year. This year, it'll be a 20 by 30. So oh, nice. hopefully, hopefully a little more room um, for for some live, you know, polishing and, and that kind of stuff too. But uh, yeah, just it just, it just enabled us to be able to really continue to get our name out there and no. talk to other people in the industry and, you know. That's the biggest thing, the hands-on, to get in front of people, the networking. Now, are you guys going to be, you know, I know they put a lot of new vendors far out sometimes. Did you guys make it into the main hall where most of the detail stuff is this year? Yeah, we are. Oh, yep. Yeah, we were there last year too. Oh, um, nice. So, yeah, the, uh, the 2019 year, because obviously 2020 didn't happen, 2019 – that was uh that was we were in that kind of other hall we weren't in the main hall. that's yeah but we were lucky enough uh in 2021 to to be in there and then now 20 yeah 2022 will be uh will be yeah, in the, once you're in there then then it's just a matter of staying on top of everything yeah, exactly to continue exactly. to stay in there <laughs> yeah 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 we're, we're excited about that <clears throat> so good. good very good i'm glad that and you guys are gonna have probably the whole team for the most part out for sema this year yeah. Yes. And, okay. and I think right at the last minute in 21, um, it just, the, the border stuff with Germany was still kind of dicey and it was just hard for them to come in. They were going to come in like through Canada and down and it just, it didn't, didn't work. So uh, this year we're, we're excited to, to share that space with our, our German, uh, you know, counterparts and, and, and so the everybody. German family is going to be in town. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. That's we're awesome. excited. Yep. That's the cool thing about SEMA is that, you know, you get all these brands, whether they be U.S. based or international, is you get the international counterparts to come in to support the U.S. brand. So you get to see the whole, you know, legacy of the brand as a whole, you know, not just the U.S. market where it's come over to, but you also get to see home base with, you know, those people who have actually promoted the brand from the ground up. Yeah, it's, it's nice being able to see that. And those who are interested in being able to get in front of them and pick their brain, they're probably there to be very useful and educational in regards to that, too. Absolutely. And, and they are, you know, as much as I sometimes have to make sure I don't get too excited and talk too loud, you know, uh, just because it's it's been such a, a whirlwind, you know, for us growing so quickly, um, they have a whole different kind of side of of, 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 of proudness, of excitement, of, you know, even just their overall, I mean, the last year at SEMA, um, you know, granted it's, you know, with, with, with being over there um, in Las Vegas, right. The, the time difference was very different. So um, every morning, you know, we would sign on with them uh, just to talk about how the day went before, you know, what new contacts I had or what Andrew, the meeting set up with Andrew, Every single morning, every morning in Vegas, we would all have breakfast, have coffee, sign on and talk to the Germans. And it's seven o'clock at night over there. And the entire team is on, <laughs> on, on, on our team's call. And, you know, you see everybody's boxes on there and I'm like, wow, this is just so, this is cool. You know, they they are so uh, just adamant about us doing, doing it right. And what we've been doing and, and, and very much want to be part of the day-to-day -day action and operation too. So Nice. Um, it's very, very cool to see. And uh, I just love working for them. Now, I mean, with that, that's something too that, you know, going into, you know, the 22 with SEMA and you guys being more of a, a, a more known brand now, you know, you guys have, have a lot of products in Germany, a ton of products, but you've only brought over a partial amount of those here to the U.S. Am I right? From, from what I remember, from what I talked to Andrew, there's a lot more that's going to be coming over to say. Yeah, there's there's a we have about 120 um, SKUs here now 
uh, about 80 or 90 actual products. Um, some of those are just different sizes, right? Gotcha. Okay. Um, in total, there's, you know, over 200 SKUs. Um, that periodic <laughs> table that you see, like that big elements chart, yep. there, there, there is about like 90 or 100 items of just like each one of those boxes is a product. So uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that we make. Um, most of it is on that periodic table. Uh, and, and, you know, what I mean by that is, you know, there's, we have a, a large variety of stuff like we do water, um, water treatment, uh, chemicals, and we've got a lot of industrial chemicals over in Europe that, that eventually probably it will be here. But the main focus right now was what we're globally known for is our, is our compounding, uh, abrasive technology and, uh, you know, our pads that coordinate and all of our detail chemicals, and our car wash soaps and chemicals for the tunnels um, is what we're most known for. So that's uh, what we'll be concentrating on first for us to get as much over here. Yeah, for us to get as much over here as possible uh, with container availability and marine traffic availability and everything else that comes with the world we're living in right at the moment. Yeah, uh, we focused on smaller quantity stuff. So it was just easier to ship over a couple pallets of compound a couple pallets of chemical, a couple, you know, on a container versus larger quantity car wash items that come in, you know, bigger, bigger drums and that kind of stuff. So that, that, that's the real reason. And, um, and, and honestly, it's, it's going off, uh, you know, without a hitch really. It's, it's, it's been, it's been everything that we've been looking for has been happening, um, give or take some minor problems, which I think any business <laughs> has, Yeah, you know, it's got to uh, navigate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not so much, you know, like we're raw material shortage problems. It's more so like just getting availability of, of marine boats to, to bring the product over to us. Um, we forecast it out quite far in the beginning and, and you know, and then we, we kind of let it kind of balance out. And now, now we are, I mean, we have containers booked all the way through the end of the year into 2023. Wow. So it's pretty insane. Yeah. Uh, multiple containers a month, some months. And, you know, you'd think, wow, that's, you know, that's a lot of product. Um, I'm, is it enough? <laughs> that's, that's my, that's where I'm at. We just keep selling it like crazy. So uh, good problem to have. Yeah, no, I agree. Now, as far as, you know, just like everybody seems as like the big release of a new product or something, you don't have to mention what, but obviously you guys are bringing some things to the table that are going to be some wow factors, you know, complementing your brand and bringing something new to the market. Yes. Yes. There's uh, we always have something new up our sleeve. Um, we can, we can R and D and produce something on all, all on our own. So, you know, we, we, we've been, we've been creating some new things and, and working on some new stuff uh, for SEMA, of course. Um, this past year, we, we talked about the ceramic coating and, and us uh, dialing in that H902. So that's the newest version of H9. That was an area that, that H9 really, we were hoping to have it here a lot sooner, but um, that ended up being a, a, a raw material shortage because it was a new product. So uh, we should have that over here this summer. The ceramic coating uh, as well, should have, we were hoping to have it here sooner. Again, because it was something we had to create new SDS for for the U.S., there were some delays there. Um, and then once we get we got to the shipping of it, uh, it's just again allocating the you know open availability, and uh, you can't just take a pallet and unwrap it and throw a hundred things in it and just wrap it back up and put it back on the boat. No, <laughs> people people don't understand what goes into, you know, getting product uh, from one country to the other across a body of water. There's just so many, so many little things that, you know, you have to do, but uh, you know, we're learning as we, as we, as we grow and um, you know, we, we're, we're, we're just, we're trying to stay on top of it as best we can. So. Good deal. <clears throat> well, good. I think, you know, as far as we're coming up on our time for the podcast, however, What's going to be the best way for somebody if they wanted to get their hands on products? Uh, what's some plugs, uh, some outlets that they could visit, like the website or, you know, some of the distributors maybe to be able to figure out who their most local distributor is? Yeah. Um, so we, we're, we're currently working on a new website um, and it'll be, you know, as we're kind of working towards our goal of having 
you know, basically a shared kind of partnership here in the U.S. where we'll have some vans in certain areas and we'll have partnership in certain areas. Um, our website eventually will have a map where it'll have, you know, you click on Pennsylvania and it'll have a few distributors and, and where nice. my trucks go. You know, that's all kind of being worked on currently because we're really still building that out. Um, we don't have any vans anywhere in the U.S. other than on, in Atlanta and up here in Pittsburgh where I'm at. So um, once we uh, once we do get that to that phase and that growth has happened, that'll all be out there in the in the open. Um, we don't have anything like that for a dealer, uh, like a distributor network on a map yet, because we're still growing that out. Um, not so much adding new distributorships, but just adding our vans and, and management still. So um, the best way really uh, uh, to, to, to find out an actual distributor would be probably uh, calling, emailing me, um, talking to us on uh any any social media outlets uh the the instagram andrew and i are on there constantly we're bringing on a new uh logistical and and marketing manager this year as well so those kinds of things will be answered a lot sooner than than um than, than what we're doing currently uh we're all juggling a little bit of everything right now but um yeah the the the, the real answer there is um amazon we're, we're on amazon for most of our products um, on, on some online reseller websites. I mean, there's, it's not fair for me to name a few and not others. Understand. So, so what would be some information maybe that you'd be comfortable with putting out for yourself, like email, phone number, yeah. something like that. Uh, so my first and last name, jason.miller at coach-chemi.com, K-O-C-H-C-H-E-M-I-E.com. Um, Jason underscore KCX is my Instagram. Uh, just Jason Miller, Facebook is uh you know most of the social media is there um you know really just the my phone number if you go on my facebook page my my phone number is my cell phone number is right in the tie underneath my my head <laughs> so you know call me text me uh i'm just trying to get everybody you know using the brand and, and being able to use the brand as easy as possible so i don't mind I'm um, jumping on groups, talking on stuff all the time, trying to get everybody, you know, to, to, to be able to get the product as easy as possible. That's probably the best answer I can give you because we have, oh, that's perfect. We have that's a lot perfect. of different, uh, a lot of, you know, different avenues. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to kind of encompass it without, like you said, without showing favoritism to one, I mean, not that you're necessarily going to, but you put that one distributor out and it does have a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, All I need I you it. to say is, hey, Jason, I'm in New Jersey. Who do I call? Yep. And I'll, I'll answer you from a distributor side or direct you to a website. It's, it's Perfect. that easy. Perfect. Now, advice. You know, with all this experience you have and you coming up with, with all the experience you have between the car washes, the detail shop, and so forth, what kind of advice do you have maybe to distributors, end-user detailers, just something in general that they could have as a takeaway? Um. For, for my life, I mean, I've always been somebody that, you know, sets goals even larger than, than, than what I think I can accomplish. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Um, I, I try to set higher expectation goals. I've always been that way. So that if you fall short, you're still above where you thought you would have been at, right? So, um, you know, chase your dreams. Nothing comes easy but if you keep the course and you know you stayed focused uh you could do anything and i'm um, uh, hopefully from you know maybe not the distributor mindset on that but you know in july of 2020 i was still wiping cars off and delivering them to a dealership or you know walking a customer around a, a ceramic coated car and and uh you know still biting my fingernail like i can't believe he's gonna pay this bill right now you know man i was all so raw and real for me still at that point in my career. And I was just at the tip of the iceberg of, of something way larger and way greater, uh, you know, by, by just staying the course and staying focused on being successful. So um, success isn't always about, you know, money, uh, especially as you get older, it's more about, um, you know, everything that success brings you personally. So yes. for me, it was, I, I have a family now, I have a wife, I have kids. Um, you know, it's not how much money am I making this week? It's about, you know, I want, I wanted to stay in this industry for the rest of my life. And I found my, my next stepping stone of that. Right. 
Um, and really it's to, 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 to leave a legacy behind for my kids. I want them to, you know, be able to see a picture of me someday or, or, or wherever I'm at and, and, and say, you know, it's pretty cool. My dad washed cars when he was younger and, you know, now look at, look at what he's doing or look at where he was or whatever, you know, not to get too sobby there, but uh, no, no, I dig it. It's, 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 it's what drives me now. It's real. It's a new, yeah, it's a new element of, of success. It's not, you know, not how much money I make this week. It's, it's, you know, what can I do to, to solidify something I've wanted in this industry forever. And that's, that's my fuel every day now. I like so. it. I like it. See, that's why I asked because everybody has a little bit of a different advice. All the, all the guests I have on, right. But it's their own vision that the advice comes from. So this allows from all different perspectives for the listeners to relate to. So some people may not agree, but they could agree to disagree because it's not their vision. You know what I mean? So yep. maybe they're able to pull something that will help with their own vision, but that's the whole point of it. And that's why I ask, you know, for this, because it helps people to see different perspectives so they don't have to be one-sided about everything. So yep. I like it. And thank you. And awesome. thank you for taking your time out today, Jason, being on and look yep. forward to seeing you in the, in the near future, whether it be an event or at a uh, SEMA, of course. Yeah, so. absolutely. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I'm available to talk. Uh, if anybody has any other questions or whatever, you know, reach out. Uh, I'd love to, to just uh, help in any way I can. It doesn't have to be Koshemi. You know, one, if, it's, if it's a question about detailing or just, you know, business, life, whatever. That's, that's what I do all day long. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And that's what fits our podcast is that scenario right there. So again, we have Jason Miller, National Sales Director for Koshemi. And then of course, you can reach out to him just in general for talking business detail or just in life in general, like you just mentioned. But, you know, we want to thank him on behalf of Buff and Shine for coming on and spending the time with us today. And again, this is episode number 69 for Reflection Artists Live. So thank everybody for taking the time out of their day if they did to watch now and or in the future when you take the time to listen or watch. And again, Jason, thank you. And yep. we'll uh, look forward to seeing you again in the future sometime. Okay. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.